So, you've modded your 3DS, but which apps should you get? Well in this video, I've compiled a list of the top 10 must-have 3DS homebrew apps that you should find helpful. For the sake of this list, I won't be including FBI, God Mode 9, or the homebrew launcher, as they are used in the modding process. So before we dive in, a quick reminder that this video is for educational purposes only. And of course, you can check out my website down below which has all the different apps listed. Anyways, I'm Anton, and let's get started. Now the first app on this list is a bit more on the technical side of things, but I still strongly recommend that you get it. 3 ds Ident is a tool for your Nintendo 3DS that provides detailed insights into your device. It detects the current kernel, firm version, system version, and model. You can check the storage on your system to see how much is available. It can even help you test and diagnose any hardware issue. This app is also a very simple way to determine if you have TN or IPS screens. Even though it's quite simple, it's really well designed and easy to navigate. It's a really handy app, so that's why I strongly recommend you get it. Next up is GYTB, a simple custom badge app for the 3DS. Simply add the badges you'd like as 64x64 64 64 PNGs in the badges folder and run the app to transfer them to your home menu. Larger images such as 128x128 automatically split, so you can piece them together like a puzzle. With the closure of the badge arcade, this app really helps you to get the badges that you want and fully customize your home menu, in a way that's not normally possible. Official badges from the badge arcade won't be deleted when you use this. Although, opening the badge arcade will still remove your custom badges, so do be careful. So if you like decorating your home menu, be sure to get this app. Checkpoint is a fast and straightforward homebrew save manager for the 3DS. The user interface has been streamlined to pack in as many features as possible while keeping it easy to use. It natively supports 3DS and DS cartridges, as well as digital standard titles and demos. Checkpoint automatically handles homebrew titles, even those lacking save archives. It doesn't rely on external lists, eliminating the need for constant maintenance for full functionality. Plus, it lets you manage sheets, which is a handy feature. But of course, use them wisely. Overall, it's a practical app that can certainly assist you in backing up your saves. It's commonly included in many homebrew tutorials, so chances are that you already have it installed. And another app that you may already have installed is an enemy. If you like to customize your system, then an enemy is a must-have. This app allows you to load up themes, including custom ones. It's very easy to use, and it's fun to build up a large collection of themes. I mean, who doesn't want this theme? Or how about this one? You can find custom ones like these ones here on the Theme Plaza website, and even create and upload your very own. I even made my very own Anton Retro theme, using the Yuzagi editor. So if there was ever a theme you wanted, then this app is essential. And there are so many possibilities here so I strongly recommend getting it if you don't have it already. Pretendo is an open source project with the goal of recreating the Nintendo network for the 3DS and Wii U. Through reverse engineering, the service aims to be both free and open source, ensuring its existence long after the closure of the Nintendo network. So far, it works really well. You can download the Nimbus app, which allows you to change the server to the Pretendo one. And by downloading the patches and making a Pretendo network ID, you can access even more features, including the updated Miiverse. This service is still being developed and tested both in public and closed beta, and will be helpful in preserving many online modes in your favorite 3DS games. And make sure to check out the website, it's pretty cool! Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as a large percentage of you aren't subscribed, so be sure to do so. CTGP7 is a mod pack for Mario Kart 7 that introduces new content to the game, such as custom tracks, characters, and much more. Once the app is downloaded and fully set up, which could take a while, and you have a physical or digital version of the game ready to go in your system, you can then launch the mod. There are many custom tracks to explore, including remakes and completely original ideas. With CTGP7, you can play custom tracks online worldwide. And these servers are separate from Nintendo's, and even include anti-cheat. And there's even a new countdown mode, which is pretty cool. And you can even utilize a custom character manager. There's just so much you can do here. And it's regularly updated, with new tracks replacing other ones. So a big shout out to the CTGP7 team for doing such a great job. If you're familiar with DSi modding, this one may seem familiar. Twilight Menu++ is a DSi operating system, designed to launch NDS files. It can also launch other systems through DS emulators that are included in the OS. 
Similar to USB loader, you can have all of your backups in one location. You can load ROM hacks and even homebrew games. By using the TW Patch app, you can even apply patches such as widescreen and control enhancements, such as adding analog movement and much more. Although unsupported games will be stretched a bit. And it's also frequently updated, which is why I recommend getting it. Next up is FTPD, an FTP server for the 3DS. This app enables you to connect your system to an FTP client, allowing you to send files wirelessly without the need to remove your SD card. It's a convenient app, making it easy to add and delete files on your system. And with the SD card being annoying to access on the new Nintendo 3DS XL, I'm always using this app, which is why this one is essential for every homebrew 3DS owner. The next one is incredibly educational, I promise, and I'm talking about the H shop, with the H standing for homebrew, I guess? I, I think, yeah, let's, let's go with that. But it's a homebrew store for your favorite homebrew apps and games. There's a plethora of ROM hacks, themes, and homebrew titles available. Just make sure that you own the game. It's best if you explore it yourself because it's a massive library. The database is up to date with regional software, including a few translated exclusives. It's really intuitive to use, with a clean interface. Just be sure that you have a stable Wi-Fi connection for downloads, as larger ones can take a while. Overall, this app is highly recommended. Just be aware it's for educational purposes. You know, education. Last but not least, we have the Universal Updater, which doesn't exactly sound like a homebrew store, but it's a large one, filled with countless unique and useful apps. In fact, a majority of the apps featured in this video can be found here, but there are different apps from the 8 shop. From useful to strange, there's tons to discover. Emulators, utilities, firmwares, and games. Some, like the Sonic ports, require you to provide certain files to play. It also shows you when apps can be updated, which is really nice. Most homebrew tutorials, including mine, have this app included. It's the most essential you can get, and it can easily get you started on creating your ultimate homebrew 3DS. If you've watched this video and don't have a modded system already, make sure to check out my tutorials down below, as well as my website, where I've compiled where you can find all these apps. But anyways, that's about it for the video. If you found it helpful, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future homebrew videos. Do you agree with my list? Let me know. And with that, I will see you in the next one.